Welcome polyphonic.org to my next video blog. I'm not here by myself. I've got John Brandt with me. And Will's over there as well. Say hello, Will. Hey, everybody. Yeah, well, this was by Bill, actually. Um, William, if you will. So, uh, we'll read just the screen here. Hey, we're at Blue Lake Fine Arts Camp, as you saw by Bill. There's a forest outside. Oh, he's got his shirt yeah, on as well. Fancy shirt still. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there's this forest outside. We're in the middle of the woods. I'm not uploading this and recording this in the same spot because we're away from Wi-Fi. We don't even have it. So um, we do have, for those of you who don't know about Blue Lake Fine Arts just Camp, I'll do a link in the bottom of the video there. You can check it out. Basically, we put a whole bunch of children through um, this camp, I and mean, there's four sessions of it. They come and they do... Uh, interactive lessons. Well, obviously, I guess lessons are always interactive. But these are really, <laughs> inter really interactive <laughs> lessons, and um, they play all day. They have rehearsals, work with a variety of different conductors, and they have faculty members who teach them. And uh, we're all faculty members here, and they bring in great faculty members from uh, graduate programs and professors at colleges, and universities across the country. And it's a really great place to be. Um, we also get to work as faculty members with ourselves, I guess, with other faculty members playing in ensembles. And uh, one of the ones that we have is the wind ensembles, Clonic Rock. And we get to play all kinds of really great stuff. Right now we're doing Philip Sparks dance movements and a number of other pieces that are um, very high level. And it's a very high level of playing because all the performers are either graduate students or college professors. And... This basically leads to a bunch of stuff that we kind of were chatting about earlier and said, wow, well, how is this good? How is this bad? What can we learn from it? So basically, we've got a, a new conductor. We see we have four rehearsals. Is it four? Yeah, it's yeah. four. Four rehearsals on this music, and they're about an hour and a half each, the, uh, the rehearsals, and then a concert. And um, also on the website, you can check out our concert venue, Stuart Shell. It's in this huge shell, it's outside, and students, it's great, students love it, it sounds really good. So, um, sitting in the ensemble, having conducted, you know, in this kind of a, a band situation at Sheridan College, I started thinking about what works for conductors in terms of getting ensemble players to do what you want. And sitting in the ensemble, this time, it, it's a really good experience for me, and it's a really good experience for anybody who's teaching to see other people teach in a situation that's very similar to Yona. It's actually a very rare situation. Oftentimes you'll get to watch lessons, but the teacher would be teaching a little kid or something like that. It doesn't necessarily, some of the techniques apply to you, but not necessarily the exact interaction. Where here, you're talking to a very high level group of students with a very high level conductor. And um, some things work and some things don't. It's a great learning experience. I encourage you all to work with some kind of a, uh, a group or a camp or anything where you can get involved with this, especially after you started conducting. There's certain things that he'd say to this section, and I found myself reacting as a trumpet player. So he might say one thing, and I thought, oh, I don't really need to know that. Or, oh, I do need to know that. And I, I worked that into uh, what I'll be doing next year in terms of instruction you know, for the ensemble, which is pretty good. Another thing that I really liked about this conductor was that he was very respectful of the time of the brass section and the woodwind section, actually. For those of you who are familiar with uh, the spark dance movements, it has movements for the brass and for the woodwinds. During rehearsal, he'd say, all right, um, I'll see you guys tomorrow at 3 o'clock, and I'll see the woodwinds at 3.30. And he didn't make everybody sit there for the whole time. And I tried to do that as a conductor in co at the college level. But uh, in this case, it was a really nice thing to know ahead of time. Uh, rehearsal scheduling was really good. Um, one thing I did notice, too, is that as the level of the player is so high, not every musical explanation requires a further ex explanation of it. So, for instance, he might say, all right, horns, you need to play this softer. And that was it. He doesn't have to be like, oh, because these six other instruments are playing this, and this is the stacking of the development section. And it doesn't matter. At this uh, stage, you're in the you know kind of a last couple of rehearsals before the concerts. The horn section just needed to know where they needed to play softer, and they'd make that adjustment while still being musical. It wasn't an issue of, you know, there's only three flutes playing here, and this is how you fit into the texture and all of this. Is it? They just needed to know that they needed to play softer. So I think sometimes, as a, I know that for me as a director, and I'm sure that 
if my students are watching this, you'll tell me, oh yeah, well, we know that, is that I'll get long-winded, which, you, you know, after already talking for five minutes and having John just sitting here, you can tell <laughs> this already. But uh, you don't always need to have this extensive explanation about why you want something. Uh, sometimes it's just good enough to say, hey, this is software. Because, the, you know, at the, on a higher level of musician quality, there are certain elements that they know. You just need to... I mean, they know that there's only two flutes playing, and you don't have to explain the relationship. You can just say, hey, you're too loud there. And then they know that, they, but again, you're in the ensemble, you're not in front of it, so you have a, might have trouble gauging that, and that's all you need. And I think that's a better use of the time. So those are just a couple of observations about the importance of playing in these ensembles. It's uh, been a really great fun Blue Lake Fine Arts Camp, um, and the ensembles are really good. We play some really great literature. Uh, and uh, for those of you who don't know, we do two concert sessions. It's uh, four rehearsals and then a band concert, and then four rehearsals and an uh, orchestra concert. And uh, so we're doing all these band pieces, and then we're going to do Haydn's creation for the orchestra concert. So I think I've used up my lot in <laughs> six minutes and 11 seconds as it shows up. But uh, John is going to talk about a few things as well. So. Hi, everybody. I'm John Brandt, and I live in St. Paul, Minnesota where I'm finishing up a DMA at the University of Minnesota, um, studying with David Baldwin. You know, one thing that I really enjoy about being a part of Blue Lake is, is not only the scenery and getting to work with really great kids, it's, it's being surrounded by great musicians. And it's during the summer, so summertime for me is a chance to kind of take a, a, a few steps back from my own playing and maybe address some issues that I want to just have some the luxury of time to work on before, you know, school auditions or recitals or a job audition, you know, that's down the road. Um, and one thing that you can do that I am currently obsessed with is um, really making sure that the rhythmic subdivision that you have going in your head while you're playing or even while you're counting and listening to music is as musically... Um, is musically motivated by what's going on. So it's not just a static, you know, pulse, but it's it's really, it's it shows what musical phrase you want to have happen. And as a brass player, uh, that can really have a great um, impact on the way you're using your air. So instead of just thinking, da, 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 you can think of longer phrase. Um, and that helps with working with new conductors because a lot of times you don't know what they're going to do. So as a player, you have to be highly adaptive and aware of any tempo change just so everything can line up together with not a lot of time to work on things. Um, so that's one thing that I like to do. Uh, it's short, and I think you can find a really instant fix in your playing. Outstanding. Have you got anything else for us? I think that's it. All right. Bill, <laughs> anything? We're good. All right. Pretty Excellent. Balanced. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, John. Yeah, welcome. Glad to be here.